What I'd like to do now is to share with you some of the most important features of shamanic astrology, particularly how it differs from conventional or traditional astrology. In shamanic astrology, we look at the horoscope as a symphony of three movements. The first movement would be one's lineage. I'm using the word lineage to describe and to, to indicate that when a person comes into the life, they're not a blank slate. They've come from somewhere previously, which we can look at as family history, we can look at as genetic encoding, we can look at as past lives. We look at it as the 12 tribes or the 12 mystery schools that a person has previously graduated from. The lineage would describe who you used to be. So, for example, if your moon were in Capricorn, that is equivalent to saying that you used to be a Capricorn, or you've previously graduated from the University of Capricorn, or you come from the Capricorn tribe. The attitudes and the habits and the dictions and expectations and the skill set that you've previously developed are what are represented by your lineage. So you come into the life off of your lineage as represented primarily by the position of the moon. The second movement of the symphony would be the tools and the equipment of the current life which are primarily indicated for men by their Mars position and women by their Venus position. There's a much greater emphasis archetypally and symbolically and energetically on the Venus and Mars positions than the more conventionally understood sun sign positions. Uh, not too many people are aware of this, but it was only about, a, about 150 years ago that sun sign or sun sign astrology came into fashion. Prior to that, the moon position was a greater indicator <clears throat> of things like personality. And in shamanic astrology, we're really putting a much greater emphasis on the intent of the soul. So for example, for a man, the intent, that is to say, of what version of the masculine principle a man is developing um, connection to, what he's like investigating, is the Mars position. Same thing for a woman with her Venus position. It could be thought of as the new god, or the new goddess. And then there's a third movement of the symphony. And in shamanic astrology, the primary ingredient is the rising sign or the ascendant. It could be said that the directional flow of the soul is toward the rising sign. So if a person, say, had Aries rising, that would not mean they're like Aries or that they're, they resemble Aries but rather they are learning about Aries. They're moving in the directional flow toward Aries. They're signing up for that mystery school, that investigatory project. So we've come from a certain place. We're, you know, we're, there's a certain version of the god or the goddess that we're uh, taking on. And then there is a life purpose directional flow. I should also indicate here that in shamanic astrology, we're actually using a template which is 144. So we could say there are 12 jobs in 12 tribes, or 12 majors in 12 mystery schools, 12 times 12, 144. So there'll be 144 places on the wheel of life that you've come into the life from and then 144 places on the wheel of life that the soul is moving toward. Now another factor in shamanic astrology is that there is an assumption made in this work that whatever it is that we experience, whether it's the most wondrously, magically filled with grace kind of experience, or whether it's the most traumatic and chaotic underworld surrender event, that all of these experiences have a meaning or a purpose. Um, and that, 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 that view underlies this. So the view of astrology of this type is that it is not predictive, but rather it's an intent 
to, it's an attempt, uh, uh, as best we can, we could say, to tune into what the intent of a birth chart is, or what the intent of a particular time period is, what the intent of a particular cycle is, the intent of a particular rising sign, the intent of a particular relationship, and so on, uh, then we are not at the effect of powers outside of ourselves, but we're co-creating with great mystery.